Russia sparked this diplomatic conflict. This week, the US showed it's keen to resolve it peacefully. But it remains unclear how far both sides are prepared to go to placate the other. Mark Lobel, BBC News. Let's discuss all of this now with Sir Andrew Wood, who's a former UK ambassador to Russia. Thank you very much for, for being with us, Sir Andrew. Um, we heard Tobias Elwood saying he thinks a, a Russian invasion is imminent. What, what, what's your view? Do you think we could be very close to one? I think we're very close to a decision on whether or not to do one from the Russian side. Um, there's not a great deal of clarity in, in the situation beyond the fact that Russia has send a huge amount of equipment and uh, a, a considerable amount of men to, to Ukraine's borders. There's been an effect war with, with Ukraine since 2014. And that it feels that, that uh, um, it's got enough by way of accusations against the West to get away with it. I think those accusations are quite easily um, shown as being falsified. For example, the expansion of NATO has been entirely because so many countries have been afraid of what Russia is intending or does that they've wanted to join NATO. So I think that's a full, false accusation. Well, what is Putin's strategy here, do you think? What, what, what does he really want? Ideally, what he wants is what he's demanded in the ultimatum sent to the, uh, NATO and to the United States, which is effectively to draw uh, uh, NATO forces back to a position they were in in 1997. He also has the advantage, uh, but also in another way warning, of having had a revolution in both Kazakhstan, not failed as a revolution, but it was a big up uprising, and uh, huge protests in um, Belarus, which has enabled him to begin to build up a Russian military uh, status in Belarus. So if he could get Ukraine along with that, and also have uh, made us withdraw entirely from Romania and Bulgaria, he will have uh, a belt of countries whose governments are in effect compelled to accept his uh, demands, which would be a great shift in, in the uh, position in uh, Europe, uh, European security. Has, has the West and President Biden in particular done enough to stand up to Putin, do you think, or to deter him? I mean, Mr. Biden was talking about what well, seemed to be hinting the other day about, you know, a minor incursion might be acceptable. Uh, there was a sort of rowing back on that afterwards. But, but, but ha has the West done enough? No. First of all, the West has, has almost entirely uh, abandoned the idea of having defence in, in depth. The, within the European uh, sphere, it's, it's only our country and, and France that have got effective military forces. The Germans have spent very little on their defence. And secondly, there is a division of uh, attitude and alarm between East European countries, which are much closer to Russia, of course, and many under direct threat, and the rest of, of, uh, of Europe. So, yes, NATO is solid. But from the perspective of Putin, it's not being as uh, committed to defence as it ought to have been. And do you think he feels emboldened, for example, when he seized Crimea, um, he managed to do so without, you know, sub substantial retaliation um, in terms of military retaliation. Uh, has that just encouraged him, do you think, to potentially go into Ukraine as well? Certainly. And in fact, he has gone into, into uh, an eastern part of Ukraine anyway, having... Uh, encouraged local people there to come to his side, though a million or so fled to Ukraine proper, and Ukraine proper uh, is very hostile to, to uh, Russian ambitions now. Um, and since then, we've also had 
different uh, ideas put forward by um, people in, in, in the EU. So I think there is, is a, a sense that, uh, yes, Europe and the United States are less resolute than they should be. But you've also got to focus in the fact that Putin himself is, um, in a sense, very much uh, takes his, his decisions without consulting his, his colleagues very much. That he has been uh, alarmed by the fact that there have been popular revolutions against governments like his own, recently in Kazakhstan, in Belarus, and indeed for that matter, twice in Ukraine. So he may suppose that he, he can se secure things by producing a solid uh, group of, of countries and people committed to his rule of Russia. Um, but he also has good reason to be rather nervous about it. The revolutions have all, almost always been caused by the perception of the leaders uh, or leadership's corruption, the fact that any uh, uh, wealth that there is is not shared with people as, as a whole, and that moreover they uh, are not in effect consulted in what their countries can, should or may do. Just, just briefly, finally, Sir Andrew, is there any potential for, a, for a negotiated settlement in, in all of this, as some sort of compromise between, uh, between Russia and the West? Uh, well, the, the way that Putin has pitched it will make that very difficult. What we are trying to do is, is to talk about security in general, or the Americans in particular trying to do that, and see if there's a better way of securing uh, um, our relations with, with, with Russia and so on. But Putin himself has been in power for uh, since 2000. He's, over the last two years, conducted a complete reshuffle of the Russian constitution, which in effect turned him into a, a form of tyranny. Russia is not doing well economically. Russia also has been greatly hit by the, the, the COVID um, pandemic. Uh, he doesn't really have an idea as to how he can make for a, a better economic outcome for Russia. So he, in a sense, is, is stuck. That's the danger of the situation, that he, is, uh, uh, he has a huge dilemma and he fears the outcome for him and for his country, uh, for which he has no obvious solution. It's a sort of sense of emptiness. Nobody quite knows what is going to happen to Russia over the next decade or so. Sir Andrew, thank you very much. That's Sir Andrew Wood, a former British ambassador to Moscow. Many thanks for your time.